classic characters have been popping up in Immortal Hulk recently, and now we get another one. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is an irate review, and I'm going to be talking about Immortal Hulk number 16, which continues the story from Al Ewing with art by Joe Bennett. And in last issue, we actually saw the reuniting of Immortal Hulk with Doc Samson, his therapist, the empty grave of Rick Jones, a lot of stuff going down at Shadow Base, and there's a few other things that are going to be taking place, but inside this one, there's a few surprises I wasn't expecting. But let's dive in and see what Immortal Hulk has to offer. Immortal Hulk continues to be one of the best series coming out of Marvel Comics, and 16 is no different. We actually start in a scenario where we see Rick Jones witnessing the first transformation of the Hulk, and he recounts that day what Bruce Banner did to save him and what this being became as he turned gray all over. He could hear the stretching of his bones and cracking as his blood vessels pop and he enlarged himself. That's how he became the Hulk, and he witnessed everything along those lines. Rick Jones, however, unlike what we assumed in issue number 15, he is not out there and about as A-bomb. Instead, he's actually been brought back to Shadow Base Site B, and they're encasing him in gamma energy from the heart of this other individual. As we bounce back over to Arizona, we see the reporter that originally broke the idea of the Hulk returning, and the one that was out there in the first few issues as the story broke. It seems like she's seen things, these eyeless sockets, from the original first two story arcs of the Hulk, and she's not necessarily ready to go out there and investigate things any further. However, that might not necessarily be up to her. A contact has reached out to the editor about a house in California that was owned by Elizabeth Ross Banner, aka Betty Ross, the Red She-Hulk, and a hole is exploded out of the side of it. So, the Herald is going national, and this reporter needs to get her ass out there and start investigating what's going on with the Hulk, because that is the most important storyline to them. All the while, this continues a narration from Rick Jones inside his own head while he's contemplating his resurrection, which hasn't quite happened yet as far as this timeline is concerned. Inside New Mexico, Doc Samson and Bruce Banner land outside of Shadow Base Site A, where the Hulk had originally broken out of, and while they debate a few things. They've already talked to the groundskeeper about exactly what happened. It seems like some men in black came with their credentials and robbed Rick Jones's body out of the ground in the dead of night, and that is why they're trying to chase down and find clues in this shadow base location. But Samson looks at Bruce Banner and he's just like, but what about Betty? Betty was shot dead and she resurrected herself and smashed her way through a wall. Doesn't she need our aid as well? Well, it seems like Rick isn't going through something quite as immediate as the transformation that Betty went through. Of course, transformations are the topic of the night because the sun sets in New Mexico and Bruce Banner in this grotesque transformation turns back into the Immortal Hulk once more. Who's here not just looking for Rick Jones because obviously this place has been abandoned but he smells gamma radiation. Samson thought that we were looking for clues but ultimately the Hulk has found some things to smash as these gamma irradiated dogs an ape, a bat, they've all come to take him to task and Immortal Hulk just starts smashing on these individual creatures. Back at Shadow Base Site B we've seen the cocoon that's wrapped around Rick Jones as the experiment is continuing to move forward with General Forty the man that we saw back at Thunderbolt Ross's funeral overseeing the entire operation. Also, he's witnessing the battle that's going on between the Hulk and these various gamma irradiated individuals. Though at that point in time, we need to sidetrack. Back in California, the reporter has arrived on the scene and she's talking to a detective where he's relaying some additional information off the record, of course. We don't necessarily think that the Hulk has had anything to do with the death of Betty Ross because there was a gunshot fired from outside the building that appears to have penetrated through the window or the wall and they found blood and gray matter all over the place, but the body is no longer anywhere to be found. However, they did locate two crimson feathers which appear to be coming from the She-Harpy. If you remember, back in the original Incredible Hulk storyline, before Betty Ross became the She-Hulk, she was irradiated by MODOK and turned into the Harpy, and now she's some sort of concoction, a combination of the Red She-Hulk experiments she was a part of later on in life and the Harpy she was a part of originally in life. We bounce back to Shadow Base Site A, which was abandoned when the Hulk escaped in the first place, and he just continues to tear these beasts apart, grabbing this dog by the jaws and separating its skull with his bare hands. He smashes the gamma bat into the floor with an unhealthy enthusiasm before the general springs his plan. This ultraviolet radiation mixed with the visible light spectrum, creating essentially daylight, these solar emitters that have turned the immortal Hulk back into Bruce Banner. A shot from Bushwhacker rings out and hits Samson right in the skull, leaving him dead on the floor. Bruce Banner tries to make his escape after getting shot somewhere in the side region. He's headed through the hallways trying to get out of the light, and Bushwhacker just keeps yelling at him. Bruce Banner's gonna be the one to feel this. He 
he's the one that's going to feel all this pain and he's not going to come back. But he doesn't necessarily know that there are things inside Bruce Banner that aren't just the Immortal Hulk. There's a few different versions inside here, and given the last page, it's implied that this is the return of Joe Fixit, one of the most nefarious and notorious versions of the Grey Hulk to ever exist in Marvel Comics. And that's where we're going to end issue number 16 before we get into the series of 17 and 18, where Joe Fixit, this alter ego of Bruce Banner and the Immortal Hulk, is going to be without his powers but hunting through this abandoned Shadowbase compound. And overall, the Immortal Hulk just continues to kick serious ass. The way that the storyline's unfolding, it's completely unexpected in the ways that it's attacking these individual characters. You would hope that Rick Jones was somehow resurrected by this gamma radiation, this thing that has caused the resurrection of so many different Hulk-associated characters, but no, he was stolen by Shadowbase. You would think that Betty Ross was going to become the Red She-Hulk, but no, she dives back a little bit further into her history and becomes a combination of her character's different attributes, becoming this Red She-Harpy. And overall, the way that Al Ewing's portraying the story the narration from Rick Jones as he's talking about the different moral and mental characters of the Hulk that he's seen over years because he was there from the beginning and almost all the way to the end. He knows that there are different versions of Bruce Banner and Bruce Banner was already struggling with the Hulk before he ever became irradiated with Gamma. If Rick opened the door to the Hulk, there were already plenty of holes in the wall. And this is another one of the personalities. Joe Fixit might not necessarily be the Grey Hulk, but this different character side of Bruce Banner is going to take Shadow Base to task and I can't can't wait to see what he does with Bushwhacker, but I want to know what you guys think, so hit me up in the comments down below, and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, and more.